Dozens rally downtown today. They are calling for San Diego schools and businesses to reopen immediately. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Steve Price and I'm Alicia Summers. The group reopened San Diego held a rally at Waterfront Park where supporters heard from local leaders and teachers push to end the COVID-19 restrictions. News 8's Heather Hope was there and has the story. Right, Steve and Alicia, dozens gathered here downtown demanding all sectors of San Diego to reopen now from schools to businesses. Marking the one year anniversary of so many lockdowns due to the coronavirus, they want everything to open up. Open! Hey! Open! Hey! Chanting to end COVID restrictions and reopen the economy. I don't know about you, but enough is enough. Reopen San Diego co-organizer Amy Reichert called out the year-long lockdown. Remember 15 days to stop the spread? Well, today is 365 days later. Former San Diego Mayor Kevin Faulkner campaigning for California governor said there's no excuse why schools aren't open. The rising anger from families and parents all across the state that says our kids need to be in the classroom. Pushing the return of live music, San Diego cover band titled Disappointing Joseph performed at the Waterfront Park rally, drawing nearly 100 people in the crowd. El Cajon Mayor Bill Wells blasted the recent high school Friday night football, no fans in the stands policy. They had to line up against the chain link fence. They had to put their noses through the fence because somehow that's safer. Speakers challenged the shutdown, saying it's been devastating to small businesses and San Diegans' quality of life. Back then, the beaches were closed. Did that make any sense to anybody? Kids held up numbers to highlight the over 2 million signatures received for the Recall Newsom campaign. Hold them up high! <laughs> Governor Gavin Newsom tweeted Friday that one year ago we made the tough choice to issue a stay-at-home order. We know this year hasn't been easy, but hope is here. COVID-19 rates are the lowest they have been in months. I'm very fortunate that last year my business grew by 50%, but I know that wasn't the case for many people. John Newhart's sanitizing equipment business boomed last year, and he says he hopes all businesses can soon reopen. Yeah. Things are slowly kind of getting back to normal, but it's, it's, there's been too much control on that and enough states have opened that don't face any of the issues. And even though San Diego County is expected to move out of the purple tier to the red tier next week on March 17th, the group Reopen San Diego says they will continue with efforts like these until everything's fully open. Steve and Alicia. All right, Heather, thank you. Now this morning at Waterfront Park, dozens of people rallied to call for the return of in-person school. Uh, the rally was hosted by the Parent Association and Reopen San Diego Unified School District. Supporters of fully reopening schools say other states have in-person learning while California hasn't for its public schools. District Attorney for the County, Summer Steffen, was there to support their cause. I'm fed up with hearing about how children are our future but then putting them last in line every single time. The rally comes after California rejected the applications for several school districts to reopen this month. San Diego Unified still has the reopening target date of April 12th. San Diego County continues to report COVID numbers that show we're heading in the right direction. 384 new cases were reported today. That's 3% of 11,000 tests. 296 COVID patients are in the hospital, 94 in the ICU. The current number of people in the ICU with coronavirus is as low as it was during Halloween last year, before that unprecedented spike we had in sickness and death from COVID-19. 10 deaths were reported today, making 59 for the week, still 59 too many, but it is the lowest weekly death count we've had since November. And now to our cold, wet weather over the last few days. The recent <laughs> storm brought lots of rain and plenty of snow. To it our was mountains. chilly this morning when I got up for sure. News 8's Kiri Lane in for Sean tonight. She's going to let us know if more rain is on the way. But first, let's go to News 8's Teresa Sardina, who went up to Laguna Mountain to see how San Diegans enjoyed a snow day. Steve, Alicia, and Carrie, there's definitely enough snow to build a snowman. We're here at Mount Laguna. We got here around 12. It was so busy. People stopping, putting on their chains to enjoy the last weekend of winter. We have John and Meg who stopped here. They're from San Diego. They're putting on their chains before they head up to the mountain. Are you guys ready for the snow? Oh, yeah. 
big fun. Traffic, rain, and snow. Saturday's drive to Mount Laguna. Recent snowfall making a picture perfect winter wonderland. San Diego County sheriffs reminding visitors to drive carefully and plan for slick and icy road conditions. Some areas in our local mountains requiring chains. <laughs> Large crowds, San Diegans getting a break and a breath of fresh air. Look, I caught lots of snowflakes. Feels great, you know, after work of uh, it's so a week soft. of uh, working at home. The Ricos of Chula Vista see and feel snowfall for their first time. We don't get this opportunity every time. I mean, we get it a couple times a winter, but it's just a short 45 minute ride up. And look at this. We've come out here when the snow was already settled, but not like this, not when it's coming down and fresh. Some are trying to stay warm. Lila, what are you doing in there? I'm making a house. <laughs> Laughter, sledding, light snowfall, and wind. Sounds of the last weekend of winter. We're actually feeling some light snow right now. Wow, all the snow we've had in Mount Laguna. Steve, Alicia, and Carrie, I think there's enough snow for families to enjoy tomorrow as they're heading out to our local mountains. What do you think? <laughs> I knew our photographer Chris was going to do that. I'm going to get you back, Chris. <laughs> you got to watch out for Chris. Yeah, he's all full of full of it. But that igloo the little girl made. Uh, oh, my. That's impressive. And Good what's job. more San Diego than using a boogie board as your sled? We, will, we may have done that, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a winter wonderland in March, but is any more on the way? Newsday, it's Carrie Lane joins us now with a first look at your microclimate forecast. She's in for Sean tonight. Carrie. Good evening. Yeah, if you didn't get a chance to go to the snow today, there's still more on the way. In fact, Monday, we have another storm that's supposed to move in pretty quickly and we could get two to four inches in the mountains. So plenty of time to get out there and enjoy the snow. Current temperatures right now on the chilly side. In fact, we're running about 10 degrees below the seasonal norm in most spots. Normally in mid-March, we're a little bit warmer than this. Grab a jacket if you're headed out along the coast mid 50s. Same for the inland valleys. Escondido Poway right around 56, 57 degrees. Ramona a little cooler at 52. The mountains in the 30s. Brago Springs right now 63 degrees. It's been kind of breezy out there. Depending on where you are, you might have gotten some bigger gusts like out in the mountains today. You can see Brago Springs still seeing some winds at 27 miles per hour. These will die down tomorrow. We will still see cool conditions tomorrow. Then rain is moving in on Monday before we quickly dry out starting on Tuesday. I'll have your full eight day microclimate forecast and we'll look ahead to St. Patrick's Day guys. All right, Carrie, thank you. It's March Madness and for the fourth straight season, SDSU men's basketball team played in the Mountain West Conference title game. Now you might have caught the end of the game right here on CBS 8. In fact, hopefully you watched the whole game because it was a good one. The Aztecs taking on Utah State with a ticket to the big dance on the line. John Howard joining us now live from his home with a look at the highlight. You gotta have a bigger smile than that, John. Come on. I mean, you're the biggest Aztecs fan in the building. <laughs> Oh my goodness, yes, it's great to have this uh, win under our belts. And as you mentioned, fourth straight year in the conference tournament championship game, but the third straight year, the Aztecs were facing Utah State in that game. And the past two years each, the Aggies got the win. So the Aztecs and Aztec fans like me, very hungry to get a win in this championship game today. Uh, a tightly contested first half. Utah State has a big man. Anemius Keda gets the feed and the two-headed stuff. The Aztecs had a tough time solving him in their two regular season games against Utah State this year. He had 18 points in the game today. On the next possession, Joshua Tamayich answers with a one-handed jam of his own. The Aztecs led by four points at halftime, then burst out of the gate to extend the lead early in the second half. Nathan Mensah gets the feed from Trey Pulliam. Mensah slams at home. The Aztecs lead by 10, and the Aztecs would protect that lead on both ends of the floor. Lamont Butler is going to get a steal, go coast to coast for the dunk. The Aztecs up by 10 again, and the Aztecs go on to win 68 to 57. They sweep both the conference tournament and regular season championships. They go into the NCAA tournament on a 14 game winning streak. That is the third longest current winning streak in the nation. So if you want to say they're the third hottest team in the country right now going into the NCAA Blades, you can say that. The Aztecs are ranked 19th in the country. Gonzaga, the U.S. Defo, is number one ranked and they're undefeated on the season. So the Aztecs, if they want to win a national championship, they've got to get past the Zags. But 
It's great to see State as a two conference banner hanging season, winning the regular season and the conference tournament championship. And now they go to the NCAAs. And you know, John, what is really cool is that, I mean, Utah State, they were playing for their tournament lives. We, the Aztecs are going to be in win or lose on that game. Utah State had so mm -hmm. much more to play for, and San Diego State was like, uh uh, we're, we're taking it this year. Love that. Yeah, absolutely. I think the Aztecs were sick of losing to Utah State in this conference tournament championship game, and they were tired of losing to Utah State this year as the Aggies beat them twice during the regular season this year. All right, go Aztecs. We have a lot to be excited you're, about. You're wearing your Aztecs I colors know. more than John, <laughs> fake fan. It's all right. I'm Abs carrying it for you, John. You got to love that, and I'll have Don't some sound worry. for you coming up later in sports. All right. We know where your heart is. Uh, John Don't is a, that. he bleeds black and gold I mean, black and uh, black, black and plate. red I'm trying to say yeah I believe right. cardinal and gold he bleeds black and red <laughs>